Hey guys, so we've got this soap today that is based on the, the match to the aftershave that I used yesterday, the toner. And this is my first try with the Sierra base from Holy Cow. So this is rubble. Yesterday, I didn't do any research into the scent notes when I used the tonic, the uh, toner. And I just knew that I, uh, it wasn't very uh, punchy or strong right out of the box. It was kind of low and smooth. But I tell you what, folks, throughout the, uh, the day, for the next few hours, I really enjoy this scent. It really uh, was, in, was terrific to just kind of smell while it was still in my hands. And uh, I'm a big fan. And so this is one that I... I'm glad I didn't miss out on. I, I'm high, I have high hopes for the soap. And the soap sometimes can't compete with the strength of a liquid, like an alcoholic aftershave or, uh, of course, in a cologne. Um, but maybe the toner won't be as bad. We're going to use this Gillette Silver Blue. I used a Nasset the last few shaves because I was going back and forth between two WR1 razors that I have from Wolfman. One's a 46 gap and the other is a 54 gap. And first few shaves I had with the 46, it didn't really seem all that much smoother than the 54. And so that's why I was kind of playing around a little bit. Well, I wasn't able to shave last night because I was exhausted and needed to go to sleep. And so I shaved today uh, about 11 o'clock a.m. And so right now, I've got not a normal growth on my face. Um, uh, less, than, less than that. Um, probably about uh, 13 hours of growth. And that's not typical. And so I didn't want to keep flipping back, trying those two gaps with that Nasset blade if I wasn't going to judge it as fairly. So I'm going to use... Um, a different blade and razor combo today just for grins so i've got that uh, gsb blade and then i've got this wolfman this is the wr2 so it's a little different than the one that i used re the ones that i've used recently and i want to mention also that this is the con the new version of the wr3 i mean the h3 handle and it's slightly different than the one i used recently well, maybe if I can remember, talk more about that during the shave. So looking forward to this soap. My first time with Sierra, which is uh, the word for whey in some other language. We've also got this B23. And it's slowly and steadily coming in to be used the same number of times as the other bores that I've got to play around with. Gave this one a nice long soak today. Maybe two hours. So... Looking forward someday to that brush acting right. He's got a lot of backbone up to now, probably still now, but we're going to get there. It's still young. Okay, so let's get this blade in here. Um, Holy Cow is a brand that I've evaluated before and found their base to be, you know, very good. And I, I do recommend them a lot. I mentioned them with great soap bases, with great soap companies like Barrister and Mann and Declaration Grooming. Um, and, and those guys. And um, here is the, the WR2 is easy to tell when it's taken apart from the WR1 because it has these four posts in the corners. And then, of course, the... Uh, the side rails here are more clunky and less pointy um, on the WR2 as well, but those four posts on the top cap are a dead giveaway from any distance. Easily locks down the blade perfectly every time. GSB is a great blade for me. I use it a lot. I use it uh, in, across my broad spectrum of razors with great success in most razors. So let's mention this. I did get an older Wolfman, the WR1 that I got that I think was the 46. It is this same handle 
in terms of the model, but back at that time he was doing it slightly different. This portion here, this thicker part at the end, is longer. Now, I don't know if it's longer this way and comes out more here, or if this shoulder is moved up a little bit. But And, and it is the polished version. And this is a brushed metal. I really like the brushed metal. And, and so the point of the balance point is different. The balance point on this one is right at this third band, maybe just a little bit forward of the third, up higher than the third band. And that puts it perfect for me to be able to grab and hold the razor and, and not worry about it. Whereas when my hand was getting wet and soapy with the polished version, with the bigger weight on the end, the balance was more off of the knurling. And so it was something I had to think about my grip, whereas this one I don't. All right, so the blade's in there. Let us get my face wet, and then we'll load up the soap. With Holy Cow, they don't really write up a big story, at least with the research I did several minutes ago. I'm sorry, um, several minutes of research, looking around at different ones. I didn't see a lot of the stories behind their motivation for creating the sense. On one vendor page, all it listed was the notes, which are oud, leather, tobacco, sandalwood, and vetiver. And those are some of my favorite notes. So on paper, this has the potential to be one of my favorite soaps ever. So that's kind of cool. But only on one website did I find that it said this was part of a commemoration series. Now, Rebel Without a Cause, James Dean movie, I believe. And so this kind of looks like James Dean. So I'm assuming that that's the inspiration behind the name and all that. And so when I was saying Rebel yesterday, um, because it's got the extra L and an E, I was assuming that's the pronunciation, but if it's going to be modeled after James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause, then I should say Rebel instead of Rebel. It's not some kind of feminine type variant, variant on the word. And so I'm sure some of you guys know um, uh, the answers to, you know, the motivation behind it. Hopefully I'm right about it being James Dean. Not strong off the puck. Smell some of that tobacco. Oud. Leather. Man, I'm liking it. I am liking it. In one sense, I don't like it because it's kind of a... I don't like the red. I mean, this is such a wonderful, manly grouping of notes in this soap that... A red cartoon lightning bolt, you know, on a, on a cartoon guy's face. Uh, to me, that doesn't, I, I'm not as big of a fan of that. But that's obviously a subjective thing. All right, let's give it a shot. And holy cow, it's one of the few soaps that when I'm scooping, I usually get on purpose more than a quarter teaspoon of product. Now, I haven't tried the Sierra Base, so it could be a little bit different. But other products by them, it needs more product. And that's unfortunate because they're also often more expensive than the other soaps. And that's another reason why I don't have as many. Uh, I, don't, I don't focus on the, the Holy Cow line. Uh, also, in the beginning, when I was working through a lot of their scents, reading the notes, things like that, a lot of them were kind of ladylike. And so, obviously, the... The makers behind that brand kind of have a have a bent and a focus. Uh, maybe that's what they like to wear for themselves. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of guys that do like kind of the floral type scents. And that's not me, but uh, some guys do. And so maybe they are of that type of thing. Now, they've got some, oh, they've got some good ones. That Padre Leon is awesome. Cuero Oscuro is terrific. They've got a couple that I do really enjoy. I think the Jamestown Gentleman. Uh, they do have a barber shop and maybe a lavender that were nice. Um, but uh, people like Sterling and Bear Stern Man and Declaration Grooming, uh, Noble Otter have several examples, several parts in their collection that I'm gravitated and pulled toward, whereas Holy Cow has, has less. And so I, I focus on them a little bit less. So Sierra Base, uh, just let's do 40 second load. 
since I don't know. If I end up with too much lather, so be it. Shaking most, a lot of the water out. Let's do that 40 second load. And if I start at 15, then we'll go to 55. Still can tell that the backbone for this brush is still quite high. We do have kind of bubbling action going on there. So we do have enough water in the brush knot to, to help pull the soap up out of the puck. And uh, let's see, what did I start at 15? I need to go to 55, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I think 10 more seconds. So let me go do my 10 more seconds right now. And there we go. Yeah, I've heard a lot over the last, uh, you know, months or a year or whatever about this Sierra base, and I just haven't, I should have ordered a sample. Right. I don't think I've had any samples of Sierra. I don't think I've ended up with that. This is very airy. So there are some parts of the, you know, foamy lather that don't really contain a lot of soap. And so it's, it's not a problem just to let that stuff wash down. But I can learn a little bit about the soap if I take that foamy stuff that's on the side of the puck and just kind of work it into my face as like a cleaner. as a. And this started out very airy, but it is actually working into something that's uh, quite, quite soapy and clean and slick. So I just rinsed and from, from just that little bit of wash, that little bit of uh, bubbles that you saw, it, I was able to kind of work that up into something that was reasonable. I might have been even been able to shave with it, do a pass. And then it didn't rinse away quickly. And so that reminded me that this Sierra base is designed to be one that is very moisturizing. The, uh, as, as I work up this lather, we can talk about it. Cow. Uh, beef tallow is in this soap, and then donkey whey, donkey milk, and is it buffalo, water buffalo, uh, whey, and, and milk, I think. Just a whole bunch of products like that are in here. you were a kid like me but anytime we went to a place that had a fountain for soft drinks fountains area where you could pour your own drink I always wanted to mix them all together I called it my you know some special concoction name or I would just take all my favorites and put them in there but because something's your favorite doesn't mean that it's going to be a, a note that works well with all the things that you add in there with it. And so we'll see what this scent in the soap turns out to be. Is it going to be a soft drink concoction where those are all my favorite notes, but they don't work well, work great together? Yeah, we'll see. Or if they were blended at the right ratio, then it just may be something I cherish for a very long time. So 
So the tips on this brush are, are fairly soft, but the, the thicker shafts are still are holding on to a lot of their backbone. I am concerned with this soap as it's it's not going to be one that's puffing up. Let us let's add one more teaspoon. I'm thinking that's probably going to make it a little too thin. But then I'll go back to the puck because what I'm seeing right now, I, I want to go back probably to the puck unless we have some kind of miracle happen where all of a sudden it explodes because it's it's not here in a in a great quantity. Yeah, just for the on the safe side, let's go back and steer up some some more soap. Where did it go? Where did I put it? My goodness, I got interrupted, and I had to go. Uh, the cat's knocked something down, so maybe I took my soap out with me. My son left his box of Legos. Turned out it was on the sink, so I didn't have to leave the bathroom. But my son left his box of Legos near the edge of the counter and the crash that you may have heard actually in the microphone there uh, before I cut away was probably the sound of all those Legos hitting the box of Legos hitting the ground so he's gonna have a bunch of stuff to clean up tomorrow morning you just uh, those cats So we're going to thicken up this lather a little bit. And knowing that this is designed to have those moisturizers, I don't feel like I need to make it quite as elastic as I often do. Now that, that right there, that is pretty elastic. So we'll just make sure we get a good consistent mix here. And trying to get that soap I just brought in from the puck to be mixed throughout the lather. Yeah, and so look at that look at that texture. If you see most of my lathers, you will not usually see that texture. A lot more firmness to it. The, it's holding on to its shape. Uh, ripples and hills and valleys and tiny peaks and things like that are usually not what you see with my uh, type of hydration level but different bases sometimes call for different strategies especially if it's one of these that's kind of designed for moisturization and uh, post shave care which is less of a party for me but it is what it is uh, what are on my face Let's see what this ore brush will feel like with this. Oh, water out of the goatee. brush still has quite a bit of you know backbone that's still translating to the way the knot feels on my face and it's not great but you know you just kind of have to use them at least the tips are helping it to 
be comfortable enough. But if I were to grind hard on my face for too long, it, I could see how it could give me some a little brush burn. Not prickly. All right. It's a good scent. It's not super strong, but again, these are notes that aren't citrus. They're not a, a high floral note. They're not quite as punchy as the word I like to use, quite as high, something up in your nose that you, you like a soprano singing, where these are, these are the bass, the baritone type notes is how I like to think about it. And what's jumping into my mind is this is the Sierra bass is an expensive bass. And if money's important to you, this is something I'm kind of barely smelling. If I'm going to pay that much money for shaving soap, you better believe I'm going to want to smell it. I've not tried the Gillette Silver Blue with this razor yet. This is the one Wolfman razor that I have purchased retail. All the rest of mine were done secondhand. Bought them from people who were selling them on the used market. So I got to I wasn't able to pick exactly what I wanted because he's in this mode right now where he has a range that he will, in terms of gaps, it's a range. I was able to pick everything I wanted except for the gap that I wanted. I wanted something more mild than the 85 that this is. But, you know, couldn't be choosy. That had a little bit of blade feel, but it was very consistent. It's very nice and uh, comfortable. So very good. Rinse this off. Now the impression I'm getting is with all these moisturizers and things that they put in this soap, I'm wondering how long it's going to take me to rinse this soap fully at the end of the shave. Because I have not been able to get it fully during the rinses now. And, but that's okay because we're in between passes. So I don't mind if some, some of the lather uh, kind of sticks around for the next pass. I'm really glad that I went with the brushed finish. It's kind of uncommon. And so if you're going to get a secondhand Wolfman, a lot of times it won't be brushed. So that's why I actually ordered it for my own purchase. Glad I got the WR2 because even though I have a better track record and comfort level with the WR1, I just think that the WR2 is just so such a gorgeous razor that I it's just it's sturdy, but classy, elegant. I like the... Eh, elegant's not the word I'm looking for. It's not too thin. It's not too pointy and sharp looking. It's robust and manly while still being... While not looking clunky. And rinse again. So there are so many good soap makers out there making terrific scents that while I am enjoying the performance of this soap base, sometimes I've seen this soap base for like $27. I think maybe the vegan doesn't cost as much, but the 
maybe the Sierra base is 27 and if they've got to charge that because of the pricing of the materials and things like that, I understand. they got to do what they got to do. But I am probably never going to buy one retail from them at full price. If I can get one used, then so be it. Otherwise, there are just so many other makers that are, are less. All right, third pass now. If you didn't know, great thing about the brushed stainless steel, even in the areas where there's no explicit knurling, it is easy to hold on to because of that brushed surface. At the microscopic level, it's like a, uh, it does grab a hold of your skin. Getting really good glide from this base. Kind of as you would expect. They also, this company, focus on good ingredients for your skin. They listed a couple of omega something, omega 3 and 6 or something, proteins or some kind of compound, fatty acids or something that are supposed to be good for providing healthy looking skin or something like that and uh, one other ingredient but I can't remember what it was little tenderness you know I'm feeling so it's not giving me a uh, as super smooth of a, as smooth of a shave as, as some other razors out there but it's enjoyable I like it and it's gorgeous so we'll just roll with that And when we're at this level, I wonder, I'll keep playing around with blades and maybe luck upon one that isn't quite as, as, uh, as feels a little bit smoother to me. And that's something that's going to change per person per razor. All right. Yeah, I am enjoying the smell. It's really nice. The leather is all around me. The oud. A little bit of tobacco. The sandalwood's not really making a strong presence. I, I'm not as good at picking out the vetiver, uh, so I can't tell to what degree I'm experiencing that. So yeah, really nice. Definitely going to keep this one in the Sierra base. I don't have a Sierra soap, and to have one that's really close to some scents that I, I, I enjoy so much. I wish it were maybe a little bit stronger, but it is kind of in a light cloud around me. Uh, and so it is there. And if I stick my snorter in the in the bowl, then I can get some good nose feels. All right. Oh, and I enjoyed that toner so much yesterday. And I liked the scent. And it is a different scent than the soap. But they're both very, very enjoyable. I Probably like the toner a little bit better, but they're both really good. I didn't want to waste that toner when I'm about to go to bed because it did provide me a few hours of enjoyment. And so I brought along this number 63 from Prix de Provence. And it's got a spicy, warm type scent, and it's a balm, and I'll be using that after the rinse. And then maybe tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'll throw on some of that toner and enjoy the rebel scent throughout the day. To make this easier to apply, you can make sure your face is wet before you put it on. My face is mostly dry. So I do apply it in the direction of hair growth. And that makes less friction happen. It might irritate my skin afterwards. See how this, uh, I would think it would pair nicely with the rubble. So I wonder what other scents they've got in this commemoration, commemorative series. I wonder if this is the first or yeah, Holy Cow's documentation on their website is a little tough. It's uh, not, not all that comprehensive. All right. 
At first glance, yeah, this smell is working really well. And that makes sense because this is, uh, I really do enjoy this balm and uh, the, the resulting the soap, matching soap scent. I did, uh, I could make another shave, maybe even a skimpy two shaves out of what's left. So uh, from a holistic point, um, high above the ground, looking down at everything, I gathered up the right amount of soap for this shave. And while we're here, let's pull it off of the brush. So the kind of feel of it for a little bit here. It is a kind of a low structure lather. It's not going to puff up very much. This is kind of a wet mix of it. The type of slickness is kind of that fuzzy. Not really uh, kind of a, so I don't want to say thick oil because it's not, but it's also not a thin oil type of feel. So that's why I use the word fuzzy, and I've used that for a few weeks now to describe a, a few different types of lather. It doesn't have very much cushion as I'm squeezing it. It doesn't resist too much. I, I don't think that impacts shave very much myself. People talk about cushion, but slickness is really the only thing that matters to me. And viscosity. So it is... It's, uh, to me, it's not too much different than a lot of the, the nice soaps out there. And so to have it cost, you know, $8 more than some of the really, really great soaps out there, it makes me want to not necessarily, you know, spend extra money on this particular brand because what's that? What does that mean? It's, uh, you know, 30% better. You know, of course, if you're looking at the ingredients and, and stuff, that may be important to you. And so that may, call, may, may make all the difference in the world. But just in terms of the product, what I get at the end here, it's it's not really worth paying 30% more. It's very good. Don't get me wrong. Very good. Washing off that first pass felt like it was a little bit of a concentration of soap on my face. And I thought, man, I'm going to be here forever. There are a few soaps out there like that. However, as I was going through the shave, I got to that third pass and the lather concentration wasn't as strong because I was a little bit farther removed from when I added the extra soap to the brush. And so this last pass rinsing it was not a big deal at all. And matter of fact, I almost got to kind of a squeaky clean kind of feeling. And I do like that. It tells me that, hey, I'm using a real soap, you know. Uh, so I was pleased with that. It did not take longer than average to remove the soap, uh, get a good rinse at the end. So happy with that. Let's take a look at the closeness. Yeah, really happy with that. Just see the tips, even on my trouble spot, uh, pretty much uh, almost, you know, baby butt smooth on the cheeks, easy to achieve in most cases. And uh, three teaspoons of water. About 50 seconds of loading, I believe, is what it ended up happening. I'm enjoying this Pre de Provence 63, a terrific follow up to that, the scent I used in the soap. So, again, we're looking at oud, leather, tobacco, sandalwood, and vetiver as the main notes in here. And uh, as well, they threw in some skin goodies into the soap, too. I think. That's it. Happy camper. Um, so now we're back on normal schedule. Maybe I'll go back to that Nasset and uh, with the flipping back and forth between the 46 and the 54 Wolfman and see if I can discover if, in fact, uh, I can detect that the 46 is smoother than the 54, how they relate to each other. Um, we'll see. All right, guys. Well, this is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I sure hope that this uh, video is going to have something that's going to help you out. Um, 
Thank you so much for watching. See that jug right there in the back? That is vinegar because I have a sink that's got some kind of deposits in it and I've been told to try and use vinegar on it and see if that can help remove some of these deposits. So we'll, we'll see how successful that is. Um, some people saying it's the, it's the fats and the, and the, all these soaps that we use. It's the uh, fats and the steric something um, that's a part of all the, the soaps and, and whatnot. So this buildup needs to be removed. And uh, uh, so we'll see how, how much success we have on that. All right, guys, take care. Have a good night.